What's up guys? Live play and explain session coming your way. A bunch of cool spots came up. Interesting decisions like this one, like this one, and of course, like this one. We played, I don't know, two, three hundred hands, talked through it, switched from left table to right table. Nothing fancy, just good old play and explain. If you like our stuff, it's carrotcorner.com for all of our paid content. Enjoy. All right, guys, a little bit of a live insight into the mind of the carrot today. The mind of the carrot is not working very well today. It feels quite sluggish and I don't know what it is, man. I'm just in a, I'm in a bit of a funk where I'm struggling to wake up properly and think well today. We're going to go for B75 on this turn, though. That much I can figure out. I think if we get raised here, this is already just like a really dreadful, terrible spot. Pocket Quatro's over here. Let's go ahead and flat blind versus blind. Definitely going to be continuing to see bet on this flop, probably just by calling. This one, yeah, getting raised here is really kind of gross. It's like a super under bluff spot. In order to bluff enough here, people have to raise pair plus straight draw, stuff like that. We have a couple of boat outs, but it's going to be like a grim situation. It's good to sort of plan that ahead if you have some downtime, just to figure that out and come to terms with what would happen to your hand on that node. I go ahead and peel the fours on the flop. That's a nice turn. Do pick up the fold over here with the ace 10. And over here, we're checked too. What do I want my sizing to be? I think when I'm reopening this spot, I'm generally just going quite big. I think I can build some overbet on this card as well. Yeah, I think this is fine, building like an overbet size and a big bet size here. I have some 5, 6, 4, 3, 7, 4 suited pocket 4s, queen 4 that join the value range at this point. It's also possible I can slow play in position on flop with like queen 7 and maybe even like king queen is okay for this sizing. So it's definitely a lot of hands that can go in this size as well as a lot of bluffs. Draws, all that kind of thing. So range construction here is pretty simple. You can have like a B7, A and a B120. That is a beautiful river. So Villain has some spade flushes and some queen X here. I'm wondering if just jam is the right sizing. I think in theory it probably is. There could be a bit of queen 7 or whatever, but that's just such a cooler that we really don't care about that. It's a tiny part of range. A big part of this depends on whether Villain's a regular player or recreational as well. Tank here is a little bit odd. I guess all in is the play. It's only a little bit more than 2x pot. There's Queen X that can hero, the Spades that can hero, plenty of hands like that. Well, Spades aren't really a hero, but yeah, I think all in is probably the sizing here for this hand. Just unblocking all of those calls. Did not have a lot of time back there to think that through. But yeah, I think this is just the sort of hand that wants to jam. I'm not going to overcomplicate things or do anything different to theory. In grade 2, lecture 6 of the Carrot Poker School, we actually cover this exact thing. Just going for like the really big sizing in these spots. And it's possible that like we make a queen fold there, which, you know, kind of sucks, but... You win more from a flush, you win less from a queen. With that sizing, probably if you knew villain had a queen, you'd just want to bet like B150 or something like that instead. Can I just peel here with king three, button versus small blind versus big blind? But of course, the point is in that last hand, you don't know which part of your opponent's range they have. And, you know, sometimes I just jam rivers for a 3x pot and I just get snapped in this pool by like the most random hands. I've been finding that that's definitely a phenomenon as well, so... You don't want to be too sort of judgmental about the results of your play. Just remember that we did a video on variance a few weeks ago and just the profound effect that can have. And obviously when you're talking about one hand and what part of the opponent's range you run into there, not really how you should be assessing the spot. So this guy goes ahead and leads. I think calls the right play here just because Ray's reopens to this player. And we don't really want that to happen because they have the sort of stack that's really jammable. So in theory here, I think call and Ray's would both be fine. And if this was deeper, I'm definitely actually favoring Ray's, I think. Because I think this little lead is just getting a bit too mergy and out of control and weak. So I'd definitely go ahead and raise there if I was at deeper SPR. But at this SPR, I think the, the problem of reopening is just too much. I think jam again here. So pot actually becomes 20 here. We're making it like another 24, so it's only a slight overbet here. I'm making it another 29, so it's a slight overbet, but definitely still, I think, the, the right sizing just to go all in. This will pick up a full pretty often, but there are some two pair plus hands in Villain's range that can just call. WTF, I mean, pretty clear what I'm repping, right? I'm repping that I have a flush, and I do have a flush. Don't think this is too much of a difficult one to figure out. I either have a flush or I'm bluffing. And it's such, this is like a terrible call. Because like in reality, this spot is just so unbluffed that this hand becomes a bluff catcher to all in, right? It's not beating a single value combo. And it's a ridiculously underbluffed spot. So what that player needed to do there that they didn't is actually, instead of just lamenting about the fact that they have a straight and oh no, like WTF, how can I fold a straight? Would be to actually dig into the fact that they only beat bluffs and then ask how bluffed that spot is. Like I'm underbluffing that spot. I know for a fact in that scenario, I'm just not finding anywhere near the required amount of bluffs. And I probably shouldn't try and find the right amount of bluffs because we see what people are calling with there they're not really thinking about folding so blind versus blind three bet pot over here with pocket eights so we three bet the big blind and then we see bet small on the flop sorry i wasn't showing that one that's how we got here 
Bill in, called the 3-bet pre, called the flop. They're now like tanking strangely on the turn. Over here, we're just going to be playing small bets with a really high frequency on King 7-6 rainbow. Over here, pretty easy check. Obviously, don't want to reopen here with 8s with a heart. Don't really want to be raised. Don't really have any reason to want to value bet or bluff this turn. So just checking back. 4 flush is pretty good for us here. There aren't a whole lot of offsuit cards in villain's range. I'd imagine this is a pretty good catcher. And plenty of like ace, jack, ace, queen kind of hands can turn into a bluff now. So I'm guessing we're just going to be calling against the bet here. We also don't even run into like jacks or queens with a heart in these positions. So definitely just a very easy call over here. Okay, it's a nut flush and just went for like a baby down bet for some reason. Checking back with the turned pair of eights here. Three bit pot again, same thing. Just middle of range, not really value bet town or bluff town. Villain goes for big here. This is kind of annoying. Like we block some bluffs here with ace of hearts. Like we block ace queen and ace ten of hearts and stuff like that. What is actually bluffing this node on the jack? There's really not very many air combos at all. There's like some ace queen combos and that's really about it. So just going to go ahead and make the fold over there on the left hand table. So let me know if you like this format of live play and commentary. I can definitely make more content like this. It's kind of similar to a stream, but we're just alternating between two tables for the YouTube scene here. Hopefully it's good. The tables are nice and big. A lot of people prefer this to the four table content that we put out a couple of weeks ago. So if that's you, let me know. I'm just playing live with no interruptions, just unedited. Minimal editing, obviously, to cut out downtime. And other than that, it's just like a real session experience. This kind of format, so you're getting to see how I'm thinking in real time. Okay, don't really know this guy. Finnish guy goes ahead and makes it 10. I think calling this hand at this rate structure is a little bit dicey. So we're left with four better fold. Could be a rec player, not someone I've seen before. I think probably fold slightly outperforms four bet against a rec player. If it is a rec, just because their three bet range is going to lack a lot of the polarized bluffing hands like small suited connector or the offsuit king X or, or whatever. But four betting that hand is usually my default. I just think that when it's a potential recreational like fold there is fine. Sometimes a three bet percent can be six percent, seven percent in that spot, something like that. And you don't really want to be four betting King Jack off against that. So just kind of waiting for a bit more of an idea of who villain is there before I do anything, just because against the reg it'll be maybe slightly winning to four bet, but could be like considerably losing against a rec player with a really tight range. And there are plenty of them in the pool. They just don't three bet enough pre-flop. Ace King here have gone ahead and opened UTG. Going to be playing one big blind here on monotone flop. There are reasons for that. They are to do with polarization. Have a think about it. No, I'm not going to spoon feed you all the answers, guys. Not going to do it. I think bet's okay, check's okay. I think I prefer bet in the real world here, exploitative. They're going to peel small blind with sevens here. This is a play I make sometimes against EP specifically. Easy check back on this 10, like pretty bad river card, killing our value here. Don't think we've got a third street in us. That actually helped. It was good. 10 for the win. Okay, going to call with pocket sevens on this flop, although against big bet it's already getting not indifferent, but it's already becoming meh. Gonna have to call this turn at a decent frequency as well. When the board is paired, you don't really want to have the seven of hearts though, because you actually, well, you don't mind having it, I guess, but like, it's not like an unpaired board where you want your set outs to be clean. Your boat outs are always clean. So yeah, we have to call again with this hand at some frequency. It's probably a mix. I'm just gonna call again though. I think people are like pretty damn barrel happy, even up into their showdown value ace queen, etc. on the king turn here. So I am just gonna call down this combo. I'm unblocking enough bluffs and I think it's a bluffed enough spot for this just to be a winning call against the average reg. I think it's slightly over bluffed spot. But yeah, any bluff catcher there is gonna be a reasonable call down. I just think that's a spot where regs somewhat lose control of their bluff frequency on that run out. So I'm okay with that. I think small board with Broadway turn and then a brick river is one of the more over bluff textures in Grady of the Carrot Poker School. We discussed that. Obviously, we ran into Ace King that time, but we need about 29% to call the river there, something like that. I think we're going to win the minority of the time, but certainly like more than 29% tens here. I think we just have to pitch the potatoes, unfortunately, in this case. Don't be too harsh on yourselves, guys, based on results. Try and let it go. When you think through a play and you're happy with that play, stand by it, you know. Back your logic at the time. Never let variance allow you to second guess yourself. Ace 10, we can squeeze or call here. I'm going to favor squeeze. And the reason for that is simply that I have a recreational player flatting here that I really want to play pots with. And I don't know if these guys are going to do enough for bet in this pool either to really counter that. Like if I am squeezing at a way higher frequency with hands like Ace 10 suited, the counter is obviously to for bet at a much higher frequency. And I don't know that that's really happening. And I think the cold caller is probably just like playing badly enough that isolating them and playing heads up against them or just causing them to fold a lot pre is easily the way to go there. So yeah, the seven's hand is, is kind of like sticky looking, but turn is indifferent. And then river, by the time you reach river, I believe that's going to be over bluff for that sizing on average. And if you're never calling down with any under pair bluff catcher combos, if you're just only calling down with the king, 
you're grossly overfolding your range, which is not good in a spot that regs find bluffs quite easily in. But it's, it's definitely one of those ones where you take the worst of it and you just have to scrape the required equity to call there. And I'd rather call with sevens than call with something like jacks or tens for obvious reasons, right? Which is unblocking a lot more bluffs. As this is a recreational player over here, I am going to go ahead. Is this recreational actually? Well, they did 3x, so I'm going to assume so. I'm going to go ahead and just 3-bet the King-10. It's meant to be a mix, but I'm just going to 3-bet it here every time and not really think too much about it. When the deuce is the paired card, I often use big bets because the deuce is kind of like a non-entity. Also, player from Morocco, weaker player, 44 VPEP. Don't think I know much about this guy, but I don't think this is a reg, so just going to go big, big, big here and try and put lots and lots of money in the pot. So there's a big difference between a board that's paired to the deuce and a board that's paired to the 10 or something like that. You know, you want to go small on the latter and big on the former. Queen 4, I mean, ugh. This hand probably just does really badly at this stack depth, multi-way. Probably just the fold. It's really hard to turn any kind of scale edge into profit with a hand like that in a three-way pot. It's not easy. There's spots, this is what I was trying to explain actually in a recent video where people were like, I think I said if you fold jack eight, big blind versus small blind, you don't deserve to play the game in my usual way that I do. And a few people were like, well, on my charts, it's a, it's a raise, mix, fold, little bit of call. And they were like quoting the chart at me, like they, they kind of always do, right? This is what people do whenever they comment. Not all people, loads of comments are super useful, but some chat pros are just looking up charts and being like, well, this is what my chart says. And what I'd say in response to that is, and I have said this in the comments, when we decide what to do preflop, we're trying to estimate our EV. We don't want to just take the chart's word for it that our EV is the same as the chart says. So in a multi-way spot where you have like queen four out of position and you're playing it three way, it's hard to imagine a world where you gain like a ton of EV by having a skill edge. It's hard to see how that skill edge really manifests itself. But if you're blind versus blind in position with jack eight, calling a bet from someone that you think is a weaker player than you, then you can really quite dramatically increase your skill edge in position at a big SPR heads up in that spot. It's a totally different ball game. I'm just going to raise here. Villain has a ton of merge continues and stuff. I don't need to make it particularly big. There are some straights in range here, but I don't really care. There's so much pair, pair plus drown. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit to this. I think 16.8 is good. If he shoves River, it's going to be kind of unhappy. He does check River. I still think, but that speed of check, actually, I think we probably still have enough EV to go ahead and jam. This is getting really thin, though, now in this run out. Do I want to shove here? This player does look like quite a bad player, but they only have a 19 VPEP. Do I want to take that into account? Some flushes get there. There were some straights already. They're very likely to jam turn. Do you know what, guys? I'm just going to jam this. This is pretty damn thin, but I just feel like with the speed of the river check there that I have more equity than you would think with this hand. This is very, very thin, though. Like, against a competent player, this is just not a good jam at all, but clearly villain donking flop and donk calling turn is anything but, yeah, just going for it there. Basically saying I have a feeling that your hand is really, really weak on average, and I'm just going to try and get you to put the rest of your money in. I just don't think people are snap checking a flush in that river very frequently. Very common at that, sort of. I call it the... I don't know what I call it. I have an expression for that when the SPR is like really, really low. Low SPR madness, that's what I call it in Carrot Poker School, where theory demands a lot of like crazy stuff, but people are even crazier. Like people at low SPR get really mergy, they get really out of control. I'm just going to fold Ace Queen to a fish small 3 bet in these positions. I think this hand's actually doing pretty poorly here, and it's quite hard to realize EV. And with Kings, of course, want to focus on this hand. We're going to go for the big pull to 3 bet, big blind cutoff here against, I believe, a reg. I think we want to give this guy a reg tag, probably. So yeah, when SPRs get low and people make good hands on the river and they have like pot left or half pot left or whatever, they're usually just going to jam or at least they're going to think about it. It's a thin shove with the queen 10, but if I didn't make it, Villain's identified himself already as such a weak player that you can go a lot thinner. So there's this thing called, I teach in my Discord group a lot, I often post this in response to hand reviews that happen in there, by the way, guys, to join that lovely educational hub. You just need to pick up a Carrot Poker School course or do some private coaching with yours truly. That's how you get in. And in there, I very often find myself saying, well, did you consider player type from line? Like, did you consider line equals player type equals read? And what that really means is that you're looking at the line your opponent took and you're trying to infer from that. Let me just size this three bit down a little bit because it's just purely to isolate a weak player at low SBR. I don't want to lose as much if I fold to jam. But back to the story. What I'm really trying to do is just basically infer the player type from the line and then infer the range from the player type and then infer my action based on that. So it's kind of like a logical deductive chain of reasoning. I think going small here is fine. You can make some better hands fold already. You can bluff later on some runouts. You get a lot of useful fold equity. Villain folds king nine of clubs. They're still folding two overs, so you get the point. Ace eight, going to go for a check and call any C bet here. Not thrilled about this, but weaker players are merging. Jack 10, queen jack at like full frequency here, basically. They're just betting a lot here. I'll probably fold turn to a big bet. This is a really bad bluff catcher. The redraw is really terrible. The jack just doesn't do a lot for me. 
the bluff frequency here is tiny king jack gets there super strong range quadruple broadway pretty much the nine is like an honorary broadway in this situation so what you want to do here is call like your queen jack jack 10 etc i'm just gonna fold it on time out i did time out how embarrassing even any pair plus gutter really is a better call than the terrible gutter to the eight. Like that out is just awful and the top pair is a bluff catcher and it's an under bluff node. So gonna open ace three against an unknown blind versus blind. This is just outside the range chart, but we wanna go ahead and do it. Prefer bet to check on boards like this because we have to fold if stab to. Gonna peel nine six over here and check fold this flop. This turn kind of sucks for us, but we do have a diamond. And so yeah, I'm gonna bluff here. I think it's better to bluff than check, but this is like not amazingly happy spot by any means. And over here, that one gets through, and over here we are going to fold as planned. So yeah, three of diamonds is an out. It's a bad out. Like The outs are not very good if Villain has a diamond, but very often what you have to remember is that when Villain calls your turn bet in that hand, they don't have a diamond. And so when a blue card falls on the river, you're actually just sucking out. And no, you might not be able to value bet. It's not like you're drawing to the nuts. But when you check that river, having just hit the flush, and Villain checks back two pair or one pair or whatever, you win. So that's still an out that's worth considering. It's not like you're just blasting turn with absolutely nothing. And there are spots you can do that. But out of position, three flush turn, you generally need to have something going on to bet in theory. So it'd be a bit of a deviation. I'm going to just see bet here. I think there's lots of opportunities to apply pressure later and just make people overfold in these multi-way pots. So starting with bet with the back doors here. I think that's fine. Over here, we get three bet to eight. I think call... The problem with 4-bet here, although it's a good 4-bet stack, being a little bit deeper helps. The problem is that it's a recreational player, and so there'll just be a bit less fold equity. Meanwhile, we're getting a way better price to just go ahead and peel. So we do turn something reasonable here. I think bet check bet's okay here, actually. Triple's probably good as well. If I downsize this turn bet a little bit against rec player, just encourage them to raise some flushes here, I think the triple's going to be a bit more effective. So I'm probably, yeah, I want them to raise their flushes here. I want them to tell me what they've got and I want to just bomb the river if they call. That's the plan. So that's an exploitative line that's worth remembering. Downsizing turn bet against rec player to make sure their range is maximally capped when you're just planning on tripling. You could also just give up that turn. That's also an okay way to play, but I think it's worth going for there. So villain checks the flop pretty quickly. We have absolutely nothing going on here apart from some terrible backdoors. Betting small or checking are the only things I'm really considering here. I'm going to check for a bit of transparency. It's not out with the realm of possibility that I could bluff at some point later here. But yeah, I'm just going to start with the check and very often they'll now pot the turn and it just transpires that they're going for a slow play on the flop or whatever and I'm glad I didn't bet. Yeah, so here I'm glad I didn't bet flop. I just want to fold. It's a spot where like they will get tricky trappy and they will try and go for a check raise on the flop with over pairs and stuff sometimes. So I do think if I've got two decent pair cards there, like a decent pair draw, I can probably just bet a third. I think with ace five, I slightly prefer checking. I'm a big fan of raising limps, but this hand's just a little bit too terrible. Ace 5, Ace of Clubs. Yeah, I think C-Bet here is fine with Ace of Clubs. Probably fine without as well. Yeah, Queen Jack 8, it's an okay board for range. It's high enough that even though it's connected, it's still fine. Gonna fold there, obviously. Gonna fold here as well. I have some backdoor stuff. This range is probably super weak. If I make it 4, does that work often enough? It probably... Eh, maybe. I don't know. Kind of running out of time. Maybe making it 4 there is okay. I mean, it's so full of shit because our range is literally like any two cards, but rec players don't really know that. They're probably just betting randomly and then folding a lot, so maybe I should have made it for as an exploit. Clearly, in theory, you have to really watch your frequencies when you're a big blind checker because you arrive with all of the combos of junk under the sun, and for anyone that understands ranges, they'll realize that and they'll be able to exploit you by hero calling whenever you just randomly aggress, but yeah, I don't think rec players are really doing that. 5-4 off, I think you can peel this to 2.2. Like, it's very, very close, but I don't think it's... Uh, yeah, I think we can just about peel this to 2.2. If we have some skill edge, this should probably be okay. It's probably like slightly losing at equilibrium, I would think. In queen four, I mean, you can go for tiny bet, you can go for check. I'm just going to go for tiny bet here. Double broadway, I do build a betting range, even against a cold caller. And over here, I think mixing between raise and call is good. I'm just going to raise this time, actually. This is the board that Villain really shouldn't be losing control on and should be a bit more reserved on but I think people see about this sort of texture a bit too much so this hybridy hand that's got like the back door straight draw benefits a lot from denial and can turn some really good stuff is probably one of our main follow throughs there a block again over here kind of timing out there and on turn what do I want to do what do I want to do on turn do I want to keep blasting at this with 5-4 the outs are kind of okay they're not amazing but yeah the four outs pretty good that one might just be a barrel I'm not sure Gonna check this out now. I think the values clearly run out. The king turn is really bad for range, though. I think we do have to control our bet frequency here quite a bit. It may also be a bit of an underfolded spot. So even if this hand is a decent barrel in GTO, I'm kind of wondering whether the spot is just a bit underfolded now after the flop bet call. I feel like people fold a bit too many like pocket pair on the flop facing raise. So for that reason, I think just give up is fine. 
it's a bit of a shame to not get to see the river but i guess it was the eight of clubs so at this spot as well is going to be like pretty under bluffed now really hard to not have anything here on the ace river you can have some like eight seven of hearts or whatever but i think like a clear fold i think a clear fold guys okay we have flatted blind versus blind here gonna flat the c bet with four three of diamonds making a lot of flushes today which is nice against check we just go bomb bomb I think this is quite an inelastic spot for Villain actually, so I am just going to bet really large here, like just under pot twice probably. Especially after the snap call, I'm probably going to bet like 27 on the river. I mean, probably shouldn't be an overbet spot, but yeah, like pot here is probably about right. I expect to get called here all day by the way after the turn timing. I expect this to be an over defended spot. If I get jammed on, this is like super disgusting and probably just a fold. It's just like a really unbluffed spot. Wow. I mean... To bluff here, you have to be such an absolute sicko. I need to be turning showdown value into a bluff. And this is a bluff catcher. And villain can have like kings with a diamond really easily or pocket aces or something like that. Very, very obvious fold. If you call here, guys, that's really bad. You're burning a lot of money. You're probably a losing player. You should be ashamed of yourself. Let's fold it. But yeah, going for the two big bets seems right. Unfortunate. I think in theory, like my river sizing should be slightly smaller there, maybe. But I think in practice, that's good. If there's ever a spot to fold in poker, that's it. If you call there, I think you lose like 45 big blinds of EV or something. Like obviously you get stacked, but like you probably lose most of what you're investing on the river to call because the win percentage is just so, so low. Like your win percentage there is probably like single digits actually. All right, ace queen. I'm getting cold called here by random player. I assume recreational for cold calling a hijack. I actually get three bet here with eight, seven. This is like not the SPR I really want to mine this at. A little bit shallow. I think we just fold this one at this SPR. God damn it, the seven high flop with the back door, guys. Why do I rabbit hunt? Just gonna start check calling. We have plenty of showdown value here. Our hand turns relatively well. Just gonna check call a couple of times. We're still beating bluffs here. Like Velen can bluff like Jack 10 and clubs twice. Like they can do a lot of random shit. The other option is to raise. What do I think about that? I don't love it. I think people are quite stationary with their bet calls here. I think probably just call is just a ton of showdown value and redraw, obviously snap big river bet on a pretty messy looking run out yeah i'm not gonna bluff catch here and that wraps up today's live commentary session if you like this format do let me know it's carrotcorner.com for all of our other stuff including the famous carrot poker school the mammoth cash game course that's going to help you get your theory in place to take your game to the next level I'll see you back here on youtube very soon have a great holiday great christmas new year all of that don't know when this video is coming out but it'll be sometime around then so see you guys soon Bye bye